Hello and welcome to the first of several screencasts showing for loops in action in MATLAB. This screencast is going to talk about something for loops are used quite frequently for, and that is variable recursion. Now variable recursion is when we use a current value of a variable to change that value of the variable. Let's look at a couple of examples of this. First of all, we're going to write a program that accepts a vector from the user and outputs the sum of the squares of its entries. For example, if the user enters in the vector negative 2, 3, 1, we're going to square all those entries and add them up and it should display 14. This is in some ways like the squaring function we saw in the basic for loops video. But here we're going to be totaling things up rather than just printing out the squares of the vector elements. So this idea of creating a running total is something quite frequently encountered with for loops. Here's what the flowchart for this might look like. First we're going to ask the user to enter the vector. Then I'm going to create a variable called sum and initialize it to equal zero. Now in a moment I'm going to loop through each element of the vector and keep a running total of the squares of its entries. Sum is going to be that running total and I will be adding things onto it. So initially before we look at any entries in the vector the running total is going to be zero. Then we're going to use a for loop to go through each entry in V up to and including the last entry and do some stuff. So I'm going to initialize a counter I and I'm going to set that equal to 1 to begin with. Then I enter into a loop. For each vector entry from 1 to the last entry, I'm going to square that entry and add it on to the running total. So here is where the variable recursion shows up. I'm going to take the current value of sum, add V of I squared to it, and then store it back into the variable sum. It's called recursion because if you saw this as an equation, you'd see the same variable on both sides of the equal sign. But remember, in MATLAB, the equal sign is actually a command that does variable assignment. It says take the object on the right-hand side of the equal sign and store it into the variable on the left side. So what this does is MATLAB will take the current value of sum, add on v of i squared, and then store it back into sum, overwriting the value that was there just a moment before. Having updated the value of sum in this way, I'm going to increment the counter by 1 and then move on to the next entry in the vector and keep doing this until I add on the square of the entry in the last position. And that would have a position value of length of v. For example, if v had 5 elements, length of v equals 5, and so this loop would go on from 1 to 5. Once I finish the loop, I would like to display the sum and then end. Now let's go over to MATLAB and write this up. So here I am in an M file with the beginnings of my program and the uh, first line of code here on line 3 is just to have the user input the vector. Uh, I'm going to, as the flowchart suggested, start by creating a variable sum and setting it equal to 0. This is where my running total is going to go and since it uh, starts off with nothing, I'm going to start it at 0, initializing it. Now I could also, uh, the flowchart says to initialize i equal to 1. And let me write that in, but let's move on to the for loop. Now the for loop is going to start the counter at 1, increment by 1, and then end at the last element of the vector, and that has position length of v. Now, I want to point out something here before I go on that was actually a comment uh, someone emailed to me about in the basic for loops video, and that is if you're going to do the for loop this way, this line 7 really isn't necessary because the first thing that will happen uh, in this for loop is it will create the variable i and set it equal to 1, which is what's going on in line 7. So we can delete line 7 and the uh, initialization of the counter is actually automatic when you set up the for loop. That's uh, tidying up the code by one line. Now let's enter that for loop. Again, we're going to start the counter at 1, increment by 1 each time, and stop when I hit the length of v, or after I execute the instructions for the length of v. And the instructions here are to replace the variable sum with its current value plus v of i squared. And that's the way you ought to read this. I'm going to put a semicolon there because I don't want to display the value of sum as it uh, totals up. So again, what's happening here in this variable recursion step is it's taking the current value of sum here on the right hand side, adding on v of i squared, and then overwriting the current value of sum with this new value that's been updated. It's a variable assignment, not really an equal sign in the math sense. So that's all, that's all the instructions in the for loop. And now the very last thing I want to do before I end is just display uh, the value of sum. And that should do it. I'm going to close it out and we'll run it. And let's test it with the vector that we had in the uh, mini lecture, negative 2, 3, 1, and that does come out to be 14. And I could uh, run it again with another vector, um, really in any vector I want. I could go 1, 0 0.1 to 10, and it would still display the sum of the squares there. 
Next, let's create a program that accepts a positive integer from the user and outputs a vector that contains all the positive integers less than or equal to that input that are prime numbers. So remember that a prime number is a positive integer whose only factors are one and itself. Example, 23 is a prime number, but 24 is not. So this program, if you fed it the number 16, would produce the vector 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. If you gave it the number 11, it should produce 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. And remember, the number 1 is not considered to be a prime number. Before we do this, we need to take a short detour over to MATLAB for some syntax that will help us out. So this program is a little similar to the sum of the squares program we just saw in the sense that we're going to be adding things on to other things like keeping a running total, but it's not a running total in the summation sense. We're going to be adding new, uh, new elements into an existing vector. Uh, so one way to do this is to use an array reference to add a new element. For example, if I had v equal to 1, 3, 6, that's obviously got three elements, I could add a fourth element by typing v of 4 equals, say, 22. Now my v has a new fourth element. There's a simpler way to do this as well. It's going to be nice within my program here for the prime numbers. I can adjoin a new element onto the end of a vector by just doing the following. Say I wanted to add a fifth element equal to 44. I could just open up a square bracket, say v equals square bracket and put v inside it and then put the new element on the end. What this is going to do is create a new vector with the existing four elements of v as the first four slots and then 44 as the fifth slot and now v is going to be updated as you see. Now the benefit of this is I don't have to think about counters or position values or anything like that and that could be beneficial if I'm in the middle of a for loop with, which already has another counter running. Now let's go back to the flowchart of my program and see how I'm going to build this. So after the user inputs the positive integer n, I'm going to create a vector called primes that is just going to be initialized as an empty vector, just two brackets with nothing in it. And then I'm going to initialize a counter to 1, and from i equals 1 through n, I'm going to decide if i is prime. If it is, I put it into the vector. If not, I skip it. And in either case, I increment the i by 1, and I stop when I uh, have done all this for n. And that should create a list with all the primes in it that I want. So here's the beginnings of a program, and I have n, capital N, equal to the uh, input of a positive integer. And again, let's assume the user doesn't screw up and add and throw in something crazy like a negative number. So I'm going to start by, again, initializing my primes vector to be just empty. It has, that's an empty list. And now I'm going to create my for loop. And like I said in the uh, last program, we don't actually have to create a line that initializes the counter. The for loop will do that for us. And in fact, since 1 is not prime at all, there's no real reason to start by checking it. So I'm going to let i start at 2 this time, and I'm going to increment by 1, and I'm going to go all the way up to n. All right, so I'm going to start my for loop that way, and then what I want to do is make a decision about something. I have to decide whether i, the current integer I'm looking at, is prime. If it is, I throw it into the primes vector. If not, I just skip it. So this is actually going to involve an if statement. So if um, there's a command in MATLAB called isPrime, and isPrime will return a value of 1 if the argument is prime and 0 if it isn't. So I'm going to say if isPrime i, so if i is prime, then what I want to do is add i into the list of primes. So I'm going to take primes equal to primes and i. And again, what this will do is put whatever the current value of primes values, I should say, of primes are into the first few slots of this vector and then just append a new uh, entry onto the end of it. I'm going to semicolon that off. Uh, and end, because if my current integer is not prime, I don't want to do anything. I just want to increment up to the next counter and that will take uh, that will take place when I simply end the for loop. So again, this for loop actually has a for loop and an if statement inside it. So again, how it works is primes is currently empty when you enter the loop. It starts at 2. If that current value of the counter is prime, add it into the list. If not, just increment up to the next value and start over again. And just keep doing this until I reach the value of n and check whether it's prime. So now once that's all done, I think I probably want to display uh, my primes list. And that's it. Now we'll save this and let's run it. And we said that when we entered 16, we ought to see a certain list, and in this case, we do. And we, if we entered in an actual prime number, uh, say uh, 23, that will be included in the list as well. And you see how fast this is, fairly fast. If I enter in just like a large number, uh, it'll think for a second and generate all the primes that are less than or equal to that number. So that is an example of variable recursion that keeps a running total of a list rather than a running total of a sum.